So I'm in the uh, internet corner here. This is the crappy Wi-Fi router. And it, you know, the cables aren't long enough to reach up here. It's in the basement. It's not in a good location. And uh, I got a system to replace it. So uh, I am going to temporarily move this up here and get to this wall. The idea is I'm going to mount this uh, piece of plywood, which is a chunk. It's a two foot by four foot piece. I'm going to mount it here and then I'm going to mount shelves on it so that I can do, uh, well, I can more organized, in a more organized fashion, put the internet together. Uh, right now I've got my hands full. <laughs> now it is a bit close quarters in here. Uh, I mean, it's it, this, it, it's a very small room, <laughs> if you can even call it a room. Uh, and one of the difficulties is I'm trying to mount this. I'm trying to mount this on this wall. And I don't know if you've ever tried holding up a piece of, uh, you know, three quarter inch plywood that's that big and hold it in one place and keep it level and try and maintain that while you're drilling holes in it. It's not fun. Now happily at the top of the concrete block up there, it is a ridge and it goes back several inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these on this plywood facing that way so that there is a lip that hangs over and I can hang this up on that ledge and that should hold this in place at least from the top so I can uh, drill the holes into the concrete where I want the anchors to go in. I figure it's either clever or I'm an idiot. We'll find out. Jeez, I am dropping screws like left and right. Now if you're wondering why I'm putting them on this side instead of the other side, it's so that I can put so that I can put this side flush against the concrete. internet crashed. So I marked holes to go in here, here, and then down on the bottom. Six inches from the top, six inches from the bottom, and about an inch in. Uh, these I'm going to pre-drill for mounting holes. I've also mounted this top rail for the shelving system because it's going to be a lot easier to mount this on now instead of when it's up there. All right, there's not a lot of room to maneuver in here, so I tried to put you in the best place I could to watch either the cleverness or the carnage. Uh, just to be fair, I'm also going to put on some healthy double stick tape on the back side. I mean, I don't know that it's going to make a difference, but I don't think it's going to hurt. Wish me luck. I'm going for genius. That is really right about where I want it. Well, I don't know how level it is, but it doesn't particularly have to be level. It really just has to more or less match the uh, match the wall, and that's going to be about as good as I'm going to get. Now I think I also have enough here. I've got another 2x4 piece that I want to put down here that sort of butts up against this one, and that will give me room for some additional uh, electronics and other things as I get into you know, beefing up the UPS and some other various doohickeys. So I went ahead and mounted the uh, shelf bracket rails on while it was down because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do it when it's down than when it's uh, mounted up here. Well, I thought so anyway. Uh, next thing I got to do is to drill some holes into the concrete uh, on those four. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, this is a hammer drill and this is a uh, masonry bit.
and these use a uh, I think it's a t20 bit I do believe get this out of the way that's annoying there we go uh, I think that's a t20 Whoops. Strip that sucker right out. All right, so I got that one in, and this is nicely attached. It's not going anywhere. I will get those two later, but I don't feel like trying to crawl up on a ladder right now. Now I have to try and figure out where to put the shelves. All right, relatively simple. Uh, I have them up high because I don't really need to get that much access to them. There's not that much that it needs to go on here, uh, so I'm not too awfully worried about it. But these uh, these shelves have kind of a nice feature in here. I don't know if you can see it, but this top part, there's a little hook on there that the shelves hook into and back so they don't come out this way. And that's kind of neat. I like that. Uh, so I'm going to start putting equipment on here, I think, and then... Uh, uh, we'll see what it looks like. I'm not going to do any wiring up tonight, I don't think. I just want to get a basic layout and see how it looks. <laughs> Pay no attention to the uh, wiring. Uh, right now I've just got stuff stuck up there. I mean, I don't have any power or anything down here, but uh, this is all the new uh, TP-Link Amada stuff. I've got the PoE switch here, controller here, and the main router here. Uh, none of this is active now. I've got that one working as the Wi-Fi router. That's going to get replaced. Uh, got an access point upstairs uh, that comes into here. So I'm going to have to do some routing, you know, some cable management and stuff like that. But uh, just for right now, I think this is about how I'm going to have it. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I might change it up a little bit depending on what I'm running into. Uh, but I need to put... UPS in here, the NAS. I'm not going to be able to move the uh, the actual fiber modem because that is strapped into the fiber which comes in over there and it doesn't have enough length to get over here at all. So, But that's also plugged into the UPS. So I don't have a lot of room to work with, but uh, we'll get it. It's not going to be, you know, I have to take the internet down for a while. But. Now the this TP-Link Amada stuff is is really kind of interesting. It's it's a little more like this is just a kind of a dumb router. This actually has some uh, enterprise class stuff with it. This controller is kind of essential to the whole thing. It manages all the network connections and does some really interesting things. It's not as good as PFSense. Uh, I do have a PFSense box on the. Uh, network at home but it's still pretty good and it is all plug and play which is nice it looks sort of ominous and star warsy we are skipping ahead a bit uh tyson and i spent some time yesterday i'm sorry i don't have any footage of it but it was just sort of complicated um we ran uh some cat 5e up through here over there along this heating duct and then through into the bathroom I'm not going to take the ceiling tiles down to show you but it goes from there over here and then goes into the closet which you can see right there and then that goes across here and into the closet in the office. Now you might notice the uh, very suggestively shaped hole in the ceiling, and that turned out because, if you see that bundle of wires right there, I'm going to try and zoom in to catch this. Uh, when, I was, when I had the original round hole cut, I was trying to feed the fish tape through and one of the things you can't see very well is that there are two telephone cables in there. And I managed to get the fish tape snagged 
on both of those cables and twist them around each other at the same time. So we ended up having to cut a bigger chunk out of the ceiling. And that was an adventure. But we got it done, and I now have cable run into the closet here that I can dangle down, and there's... Well, you know what I mean. We're back in the noisy room. Now, I did uh, hook all of these together, and they do seem to play nicely with each other. Uh, we have the... Let's see, this is the switch. No. This is the router which I need to run the cable from the cable modem, or the uh, um, fiber modem, over to here. That feeds in, and then this is a PoE switch, so this powers the controller, and the controller manages all the connections. The connection for the upstairs access point is this one that I've sort of routed down here. I also mounted a power strip along here that uh, will be hooked to the UPS so that everything that's powered by the strip will be covered by the UPS. <sighs> and uh, I think this is pretty much ready to go other than putting the connections on the ends of this cable that we ran because I still haven't routed this yet. That needs to go over the river and through the woods and down into the rack and trying to do it somewhat neatly. I also got a call this morning from the uh, plumbers. I had asked them for an estimate on what it would cost to have them do the installation of the uh, water softener and the... <laughs> it was less than half of what I thought it was going to be. So I just said, yeah, you guys come in and do this. Take this off of my hands. So they came in and did it. Uh, the only thing I don't like is they didn't put a bypass around the water softener. Um, but I'm not going to bitch about that too much. Now I also have these um, two sediment filters in place. And I don't know if you can see in there this thing okay this is a 50 micron filter i think and this is a 200 so i'm trying to filter filter out all the sediment that might be coming from these lines and the 50 micron is pretty clear but the 200 i mean it's got chunks in it it's crazy and i got these drainable so that they're um you just open them up and it blows all the uh all the particular matter out these are really nice. I like these a lot. Uh, got them on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link. Uh, well, so this is cool. This is in. It's working. Oh, I am so happy with that. Got the bin filled with salt. A couple of extra bags there. And in another two months, we'll have to replace it. And ta -da! the ice machine is connected. They did this too. Put the filter in. Got a really nice uh, filter back here. So it's already being, you know, gone through the water softener and then this is an, another um, pretty decent filter. But check this out. All the ice I could want. Oh yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. Finally have a working ice maker. So what's left? Well, um, got this dumb, well, not dumb switch, but it's not a PoE switch uh, over here, but I need to put the uh, RJ45Ns on that cable. But I got this really nifty thing, and I want to show this to you guys. If you're like me, you probably hate making RJ45 cables because getting those ends to seat right and you know crimp right and everything and get all the right connections is a pain in the ass. But I found this. This does pass through connections. So all the wires pass through the connector and the tool 
when you finally do the crimp down, it cuts them off. So you don't have to worry about getting the ends absolutely perfect. It just uh, goes in. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm really kind of looking forward to it. I'll let you know how it goes. And then there is the setup of the whole Omada system. That in and of itself is probably going to be a separate video. Uh, there are other videos online that do a much better job of explaining how to do it and everything. I'm just trying to do this the first time. So, you know, I'll probably show you how I screw up <laughs> because, you know, it's what I do. Anyway, um, I'm going to cut this one for now. Uh, we'll do the set up in the installation later. I want to make sure that it's all working and everything because I need to make sure that this is working and set up before I swap. Um, and I'd like to do that in the you know minimal downtime way possible. One of the cool things that this system does is with the wireless access point and this controller is it allows you to use that wireless access point for multiple SSIDs. You can set up virtual LANs and have all of them able to come in on the access point but be routed to separate subnetworks in your network. So for instance, you can have you know your main admin network, you can have a separate kids network, you can have one that's just for IP cameras and security, you can have one that's for IoT devices. I am really kind of looking forward to that because, you know, I do have some IP cameras and uh, I would like to be able to hook them up to this. All right, that's it for now. Uh, I'm done for the night. We uh, <laughs> got a, the water softener went in this morning uh, and this got hooked up this morning. So it was a lot of, um, a lot of flurry. <laughs> and all of that but uh we're in place Ooh, and it's dark but i'm really glad that's done i mean that has been a big project getting that water softener in i'm one that i haven't been looking forward to because of the amount of time it would take to take all the water offline i think they got that done in two hours so they did a really good job uh wagner plumbing and heating so just going to say I'm, I'm planning on keeping to use them. So, all right, for now, see you guys. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Oh, you want attention? Yeah, of course. Everybody wants attention. All right, should we go outside? Yeah, let's go outside. Let's go outside.